Well, this morning we're starting a, a journey that I hope for many of you will be transformational. It might not be a complete 180 transformational, but maybe it might just be a one degree difference or a next step that can make all the difference in your walk as a disciple of Jesus Christ. You know, I've had the privilege to be a pastor for 16 plus years, now 10 plus years here at St. Paul. And over the course of my ministry, I always am on the look for ways to help uh, bring to light the truths of the scripture as contained in, in God's word in that holy Bible, that bring it to light and get us to know deeper God's love for us in Christ Jesus, especially that truth of the gospel. And over the course of years, different things have come across my plate, and now I got an opportunity to talk a little bit about this concept and this way of viewing God and viewing our relationship with God as a one of delight, as one of, well, of mutual delight, like we can actually like and love each other. You know, it comes to, to following Jesus. Jesus gave this invitation one day to his disciples in John chapter 10. John was there and he recorded it for us. So we have this message from Jesus where he tells us that the thief, there's a thief who comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But then Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. But here's a problem for most of us as, as Christians. We add three words onto that. We add, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly someday in heaven. We change it. We change what Jesus says from this present active verb to making it a future hope. And certainly there is part of that there. That is a future hope of being in the presence of Jesus. Oh, will that be a day? But Jesus doesn't just want you living in his presence. He invites you to a life that is abundant even now. So, would you say that your life, would you describe it, that walk with Jesus, as an abundant life? Or is just kind of getting by, going through the motions? In fact, maybe when it comes to your walk with Jesus as a Christian, being a Christian is just like kind of one area of your life. You kind of got this silo, like, like you're a Christian, and uh, you're, you're, you're an employer, and, and, you're a, and you're a husband, and then for some reason you're a Dallas Cowboys fan. Nobody can figure it out. And they don't interact. There are all these separate categories. And, and, and in church, is just like kind of one thing about you. It's kind of like a, a club that you're, you're, you're a part of and not a, a life that you're living. In fact, what I would invite you to see is what we're going to walk through as, as Justin Rossell in this book that we've encouraged you to already kind of get and be a part of in these coming weeks is that there is a life that's available, a life that he would call us into of mutual delight. So let me ask you a question as you kind of think about that this morning. I know this, it's a lot to take in, maybe words you haven't even thought of before, but I'm, I'm going to guess that, that most of you, who, you're here this morning because you theologically, theologically, you're a theologian, you know that God loves you. I bet you everybody here believes God loves you. But what I believe a lot of people that believe, too, is that God loves you, and you can say that, but you can also at the same time have this feeling that, that God doesn't really even like you very much, though. You know, like he loves you because he's required to. It's part of his nature. But, but, but when you pray to him, you kind of have this feeling that, you know, he's kind of thinking when he hears from you, he's kind of like up there going, oh, no, here she comes again. How many times are we going to talk about this? Here he is again. Same sin. Well, I think, I can't remember, I forgave it before, but I think there's something there, I, I don't know. You got this idea that, that, that God kind of just shakes his head when he looks at you. To think of God actually seeing you as he would love to see you, as, as a mutual delight, is, is something foreign to us because we're always stained by this sin in which we see ourselves and those around us. And what we're going to invite you into this journey of mutual delight during these next eight weeks is to see you afresh and anew what God has already declared about you in the pages of Scripture. You know, there's a lot of ways we can look at the Scripture, but this idea of mutual delight is one that, that I think we can kind of forget because of the burden of our sin. I love how the author, Justin Rossell, he mentions it in his introduction, where we're going and, and why I think this is going to be a helpful, a helpful journey for all of us. He says the ultimate goal of this entire journey of delight is to relieve the burden of being a Christian with the joy of being a follower. To follow Jesus is to have confidence in God's delight and to have freedom to try and to fail. Following Jesus means you are caught up in a love story beyond your wildest dreams. 
To follow Jesus is to put your foot on a path of adventure marked by challenges and difficulties and sorrow and failure, but marked most fundamentally by mutual delight. As we read Scripture and think and pray and discern together, I hope you will also come to see discipleship as the adventure of being loved and loving. From the introduction on page 5. Now, I read that for you because I think that we would all, we'd all like this. We all like this idea of of an abundant life, of living in in mutual delight. And so we're going to spend some time talking about it, and we're going to do this series for the next eight weeks. It's going to take us into summer. And I know that some of you are thinking, like, Pastor, you usually don't start series around this time. We're kind of like usually winding down, getting into summer, knowing our patterns all change. And big series are usually kind of like the fall or January. And we're doing this one now. And the reason we're doing it now, because those of us who kind of previewed the book, read through it, have worked through it, have had conversation of it about what we are, we're learning and what it's unfolding for us in the pages of Scripture, we're saying to ourselves, we can't hold this back. Like, we've got to get it in your hands. We've got to get you in this time and in this place. And so, yeah, it doesn't ideally fit in the calendar, but I think it's God's perfect timing for what we're going these next eight weeks. I know some of you have already picked up a copy. Great. All of you get an opportunity. If you got, we still got a few copies left, very few left of the paper edition. The good news is if you're a Kindle reader, it's also available on Kindle. And I think what's that Kindle, that, 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 that free subscription some of you have on Kindle, you can get it there. And I know some of you are thinking to yourselves, Pastor, I'm not a reader. Okay, I get it. I mean, that's how you actually talk. But um, uh, when, when I hear, that's my translation in the mind. Sorry. Uh, but uh, I, I'm, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you don't like reading because good news is I got the audiobook, the complete audiobook. You can listen to it for free on that website, stpaultexas.com slash delight. The author reads the whole thing for you, okay? So you might even want both, reading and, and following, following along, okay? The, we're removing all the obstacles. Uh, there's a reading guide, too, for you that, that starts with a reading today and goes to the next coming weeks, and we even have catch-up days and everything in there, which I encourage you to pick up one of these, follow along. I, I know you're going to miss some days. I know you're going to get to some chapters and some sections where they're going to be very uncomfortable because of the season of life you're in, because of the things you're experiencing. And I want to give you permission as your pastor, and the author gives you permission, explicit permission as well. Skip it. If it's too hard, if it's too difficult, if it's too confusing, skip it. Go on to the next section. Maybe you'll come back to it some other day. Don't worry. Don't let anything inhibit you from journeying in this. In fact, we, we want to encourage you, not just in our messages and our daily readings and daily live uh, videos on social media that will be having conversations and guests talking about this, but to get in a conversation, to get in a huddle with other people who are journeying through this. That you, you sign up for one of those small groups that are meeting. Some are starting this week and some are starting next week. Or maybe an individual discipleship pathway is something that you want to seek. Get on it. Sign up. I can't encourage you enough to see what God is going to do during these, fine, these next, next eight weeks. Because we need this image of God. We live in a broken world and, and following Jesus should be the greatest adventure that any of us can ever take in this world. It's just we've forgotten or we've allowed other images to kind of overtake our minds. So let me give to you, a paint for you kind of a, a picture for what this looks like, this mutual delight that God's inviting you into. Man, you know, I, I have four kids, and my, and my youngest daughter, she's two years old, just turned two, uh, not, well, it's been a couple months now, just blink, right? And, and I know that every day when I get home from work and the garage door opens, I pull my car in, and she's standing, though, waiting to open the door to the garage because we try to keep her to safe. She's waiting and listening for the moment that daddy's car door closes. The engine's off, the car door closes so that she can open the door and that she can come out, and she'll usually, usually go this kind of conversation starts like this. She just says, dad, 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 on repeat. Oh, that's right. She's not saying it right now as I do this. But dad, 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 and then she'll come and then she'll squeeze. She'll squeeze this leg with both of her arms all the way around and then she'll get this leg with both of her arms all the way around with a tight hug. And because she's got a servant heart, she likes to serve. She'll take my lunchbox with my dirty 
dirty dishes and she'll run it into the kitchen uh, for mom and then she'll come running back and then though she'll come back to me and she'll say something like this da 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 up 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 which means she wants me to pick her up right and she wants me to pick her up and she wants me to kind of fly her around the room and she wants me to kind of tickle her and, and kind of give her that undivided attention and, to, and before you know it we're, we're giggling and smiling and laughing and and and, and we're just enjoying one another's presence and friends that's the image I want to kind of put in your mind if you've seen that or you've been a part of that you ever think that God wants that with you that he sees you as someone in whom he delights in That when you walked in those doors this day and you gathered as the body of Christ here this morning, Jesus was like, Dad, look who's here today. Look who they brought with them. I can't believe it. They're going to sing and they're going to pray and they're going to grow and they're going to learn. It's a great day, Dad. Look who's here. I mean, can you hear the Father in heaven when you come before him in prayer? He's not saying, oh, no, what is it? He's actually saying, Wow, they want to spend time together. I can't believe this. My favorite people are here. Yeah. Maybe you haven't felt that in a while or ever. But I want you to to, to go in this journey with me because it's not just our emotions. It's not just our thoughts. It's not just our, our souls. It's our entire being, even our will, that we can see as a mutual delight. In God and because of Christ Jesus. Now, the first one that, that I want to talk to you, I'm going to give you kind of like an overview of where we're going. We're not going to dig deep into it. We're not going to look at all the Greek and the Hebrew. We are going to spend some time looking at that because we're going to look at some of the same words that you've been reading in your English Bible. But in our Western kind of mindset, we kind of get through this idea of here, seeing the Bible as something we've got to get through. I mean, we've got Bible plans, read through the Bible in here. Nothing wrong with that. But I want you to see the Bible is not something that you got to get through, but rather something that works through and works in you and me. So we're going to go deep and through some of these words and see the beautiful map, the beautiful image that God gives us of this delight. And it starts with this very first one. The first one that we're to talk about is joyful delight. And joyful delight, it involves your emotions. And what we're going to learn is we're going to learn some fun words along the way. In fact, I forgot to tell you, there's an outline on the back of your bulletin, so you can fill in some blanks there today. i got pens back in the pew and all those other stuff, so we're going to have a little bit more fun. So for those of you who learn by writing, we're going to engage that a little bit today, so you can fill those in. And and, and all of us can actually do these different words because joyful delight involves our emotions, and so the word that we're going to associate it is woohoo! So try that out loud. 8.30 8.30 was better than that, guys. <laughs> Let's try it again. Woohoo! Woo-hoo! There we go. There we go. Yeah, woohoo! It's the kind of feeling that emotes and gets you motivated. It gets you moving. And if you think about this, this woohoo feeling, you can probably think back in your lives when maybe, maybe not with your walk with God, but maybe in your other life experiences you've had this. I, I can think back, we were reminding our, ourselves uh, this past week was an anniversary of the, of the, of the uh, gotcha day of my uh, oldest son. With that gotcha day in adoption language is the day you, you bring that child home, it's placed in your arms. And we were going through and we talk about the story as our family with all of our kids. And, and, and we were remembering back to that Monday in Holy Week where the social worker gave us a call and told us the good news that, that we had a baby boy laying, that he was in Houston in foster care and that they had placed a him in our home. We had a little baby boy. We just had to go get him. And so we made arrangements to go pick him up in, 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 on Wednesday. And on Tuesday, then we did important things like go to Babies R Us and register. Because we didn't know if we were going to have a boy or a girl, one, two, three, how old they would be, how big they would be. We just knew God was leading us down this path of adoption. And so when we found out about, about him, how old he was, and uh, all of that kind of detail, we got that woohoo kind of emotion. And we went to the store, and Babies R Us, for, sorry for you kids who don't know, that before Amazon, you used to have to buy baby stuff at a store. It was crazy, hard times, dark days. And, and one fun things about going to Babies R Us is you get to register. And I still remember talking to the clerk and saying, we needed to register. We're, ha- we're having a baby. And he asked what the due date was. And we said, Wednesday. <laughs> kind of looked at us a little weird. He we said, we're adopting. Isn't it great? And he was woohoo with us, you know, celebrating good news. That's what that feeling is. And you ever think that God actually looks at you and goes, woohoo. It's so exciting. They're here. 
I mean, hear this passage from Zephaniah. I love this passage. Let's look at this passage from Zephaniah. It says these words. The Lord your God is with you. The mighty warrior who saves, he will take great delight woo-hoo, in you, in his love. And he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. That's what he wants, to delight over you. And how can he do this? How can God delight over you when you know your sin, when you know the burden that so easily entangles it, you know the thing that you can't seem to break? How can God delight in you? Well, because of Jesus. Matthew remembers what Isaiah said, and so both of them say to us this powerful word from Isaiah and from Matthew, the same quote. Uh, we'll get there in a moment. We'll get there in a moment. I'm getting ahead of myself. I got too far. I'm getting, see, I'm getting too excited here this morning, guys. All right. Woohoo! Thank you. Thank you, Matt. All right, let me give you a quote from the book, page 17. Powerful and emotional response to God's action in Jesus, even in the midst of the difficult and painful and the confusing and hard. And get this, hear this, church. It means jumping for joy even when you can't get out of the wheelchair. Jumping for joy even when you can't get out of the wheelchair. You know, this woo-hoo kind of joy, we see this word most beautiful and most surprisingly on the night Jesus is betrayed. He's about to be arrested. He's about to be beaten. He's about to be denied. He's about to be crucified. And John, who was there that night, who heard all those words Jesus said in John chapter 15, he writes this amazing thing, this amazing statement that Jesus says, and he says it this way. He says, all these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, my delight may be in you, and that your delight, your woohoo, may be full. That Jesus has a way to find joy and delight even in the midst of difficult painful, confusing, and hard times. And he has that available for you as well. So our first one that we have is, is woohoo, or that emotional kind of response. The next one that we talk about, the second one is thoughtful delight. And thoughtful delight involves your, your, your mind. And thoughtful delight, the word we're going to use with that, we're going to say, wow. Let's try that. Wow. Oh, good, I didn't have to ask you to do it twice. That would be embarrassing for you. Yeah, wow. You ever have wow experiences? I see this sometimes. My oldest son, when I, when I come home sometimes, he loves finding things in our house that are no longer functional and taking them apart and putting them back together and connecting them with other things that aren't functional to make something new. And he wants to usually show me this, what he's made. And, and a lot of times I don't know what it, what it does, but sure often than not, that thing that he made, it is something that solves a problem that he had. And I simply look at that new design and I say, wow, wow. Maybe you have that experience sometime as a thoughtful delight when, you, when you're watching a movie. You ever have this? You get halfway through the movie and all of a sudden, ding. You know how the rest of the story goes and you blurt it out and, uh, sorry dear, uh, for, for doing that. Because your mind just has already worked through it, you've already thought through it and you're racing ahead. Thoughtful delight, it makes you go, wow. And that's where that, that passage comes that, that Isaiah forte- or prophesizes and that Matthew counts in on. When it talks about my delight, where does that delight come from? I, Matthew tells it this way. He says, behold, my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth the justice to the nations. My soul delights. We hear the Father say this right in Jesus' baptism. He stands in for you. And the Father says from that cloud above, this is my Son in whom I delight. The words echo again on the Mount of Transfiguration. And Peter, James, and John, they were there and they heard that voice say once again of Jesus, this is the one in whom my soul delights. I delight in him. And we have the good news that because of our baptism, because of washed in water in the word, God doesn't just look at Jesus and delight in him, but he delights in you as well, his son and his daughter who he's made his very own through water in the word. You bring him great delight. And yet it's also the same word that, that Paul uses when he writes to the church in Corinth and to the church in Harlingen, these words. 
For the sake of Christ, then, I delight, I wow in weakness, insults, hardships, persecution, and calamities. I like how Rossell mentions it in the book on page 23. He says, Paul sees God present and active in the midst of challenge and failure and heartache and loss, and it makes Paul say, wow! And knowing that the Spirit is still shaping us to be like Jesus, even in our failures, knowing that our brokenness is held in nail-scarred hands, knowing that God's power is made complete in our weakness, we can look unflinchingly at the difficult and challenging and broken things in our lives and see how it all works, see how God is still present and active, and then approve, accept, and somehow think well of even the weakest and most vulnerable areas of our lives. See, friends, this isn't journey. This isn't about turning your smile upside down and making you happy. No, this is real. This is real life. Knowing you can't avoid trials. Knowing you cannot avoid and escape all pain. We've learned that this year, right? Don't forget it. But there is a mutual delight that God has for us and we for him that allows us to live in the midst of our brokenness, knowing that the brokenness and the pain do not define us. God has already defined us through Christ Jesus, assured to us in the waters of our baptism, you are his son, you are his daughter, in whom he delights. So, woohoo! Wow! Let's keep going. Third part, playful delight. Playful delight. And this involves your, your soul, and it makes you go, wee! Let's try that. Wee! See what I did there? I got a drink of water. There we go. I, just, just, there. No, I love this one. So this is a Hebrew word that we're going to spend some time with in the coming weeks. And it's a Hebrew word that goes, sha'ah. I mean, that's a fun word to say too. Sha'ah. I mean, that just sounds fun. Let's playful. And in Zechariah chapter 8, we hear these beautiful words. The city streets will be filled with boys and girls playing there. Sha'ah. Woo-wee. Or we hear in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 8, the infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to that playing, knowing that it's not yet fulfilled. But what sometimes I think what we miss even in this walk is that it's a blast following Jesus. It should be something that we look at at excitement. I mean, did you get up this morning and say, Oh, babe, we're going to church today. We're going to church today. Let's go. I can't wait. This is an exciting day. It's church day. It's Sunday. I mean, woohoo! let's go. We let's go play. Or has it become, or has it become just like something you do? In fact, it's not just something you do. It's something you do to, to make God happy. I mean, I, I equate it a little bit to some things that, that happen on the ball fields. Maybe you've been a parent like this or you've seen parents like this on, on the softball field or on the basketball court or on the football pitch where, they're, where the kids are playing a game and she's just gone two for three at the plate in the softball game. She had two home runs and struck out once. And when the first thing that happens when mom sees her after the game, she goes, why'd you swing at that pitch? Or, or, or dad, after the basketball game that you just won, it was thrilling, double overtime victory, and the first thing dad wants to talk about is how you went nine for ten at the three throw line. You missed one. And all of a sudden, playing a sport doesn't become fun, but it becomes, it becomes hard. It becomes a performance that you're trying to make mom, you're trying to make dad happy. And all of a sudden, what well, should be fun and enjoyable becomes, becomes a burden. Friends, I think some of us have done that with our walk with Jesus, with our discipleship with him. We've made it a burden. And we thought to ourselves, if we just pray harder, if we just give more, if we just study the Bible more, if we just do all of this, and we put these burdens on ourselves thinking that if we do these spiritual practices, God's going to like us better, that he'll delight in us. No. 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 He already fully, completely, and totally delights in you because of Jesus. He doesn't want you to play for his delight. He invites you to play from the delight he has for you. It's not a burden. 
It's a blessing. It's a joy. And if it feels like a burden, I hope you're going to go on this journey with us because you can be freed from that shackle to live the life as he would have you live that is abundant and is now. Which leads us to our fourth one. Now, a fourth one in our reading plan this week, the fourth one's going to be on Friday. And I got to say, before you read the fourth one on Friday, before you join us on the social media, either have a really good meal or have a really good meal planned after you read this because you're going to get hungry. And this is one I hadn't really ever thought about before, but Rossell does a beautiful job laying this out and playing it out where it shows up in Scripture, and we call this delicious delight. And delicious delight involves your senses, your senses, your eyes, ears, smell, taste. And so what word we're going to use for this is the word yum. Let's try that. Yum. I mean, like, no, no, not like yum, like yum. Come on, there you go. Yeah, get it from the side. There you go. Yeah, you got it. Oh, man. There you go. You know, we hear these especially in the book of Psalms. Psalm says these words, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my lips. Or Psalm 37 that says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. I remember that verse when I was a kid. I memorized that one pretty quick because I knew what the desire of my heart was. I wanted a million dollars. And so therefore, because I wanted a million dollars, I'm going to delight myself in the Lord. Look at what I can get if I delight myself in him. <laughs> took me a couple years to learn that wasn't what they were saying. That it starts with the first part. Delighting myself in the Lord. Making time to be in his word. And that as I eat that word, as I bring it into myself, I'm saying to myself, wow, this is good. This is yummy. I want some more of this. And what happens then is the more that I'm in that, the more that word is in me and I'm taking it in. It's transforming my desires. I'm not the selfish thing of a million dollars. The desires of the one who delights himself in me. And my desires change. And my priorities change. And the burden that it was over here becomes a blessing in which God is at work. I love how Wausau writes about this on page 31. He says, God's word, when we chew on it and ponder it and meditate on it, brings with it delicious delight. Receiving and internalizing God's word is like eating food that not only sustains and nourishes, but food that delights. Delights. Yum. And it brings us to one more that we're going to look at here today, just as a quick, quick, quick overview. And I know not very quick, but as quick as it can, I can, I can be. And that final one is desirable delight. And this desirable delight, it involves your will. And it makes you go, yes, please. Let's try that. Yes, please. You ever wonder why a love song is in the middle of your Bible? Song of Solomon? That's what we're going to talk about. And I know this word, desirable delight, even saying the word desirable feels wrong, doesn't it? Because we've allowed society to usurp that in our hyper-sexualized hyper culture where desire becomes something, all desire seems to become bad. But we've got to reclaim it and reform it through the words of the Scripture. And we'll see desire isn't bad. We manipulate it just like any one of these. We mess up. But desire in itself is a good thing. We'll spend some time in the Song of Songs. We'll see that that image in the New Testament that God uses to describe Jesus and the people of God, the body of Christ, is a bride and a groom. We don't throw out the image. We instead reclaim the image that God would have it be. We hear these words in Isaiah 62. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called my delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. We hear it also in Psalm 1, verse 2. Blessed is the person whose delight is in the law of the Lord, who meditates on his law day and night. I know what you're thinking. When's the last time you read the law of the Lord and you said, Ooh, please, sir, may I have another? But what if there was a way? What if there was a way in that mutual delight relationship that he calls us to, to see that word and that law as a yes, please, not an oh, no, 
kind of word. I know it's a lot to take in. A lot to take in in some what, 20, well, 24 minutes. But in the midst of it all, what, what I hope you are, are beginning to see is that if we can just take a little bit of a turn, maybe just a one degree turn, a one new step in a new direction, that we can experience this imagery that the scripture uses of, of mutual delight in God and, and he in us, that it can start transforming how we approach following Jesus. That following Jesus would not be a burden, but would be primarily a relationship of mutual delight. Now, in the coming days, in the coming weeks, we're going to talk about some other ways of viewing it. Scripture is not viewing, it's not wrong, it's not right. It's a matter of not making sure that, that we don't lose this type of image. We need it. We need it in the life that God has called us to live, in this life that he says you can live right now abundantly because of Jesus. And my prayer is that through this journey of delight that you can just begin to take that one next step. Already, as I said, we use this in a, in a kind of group to kind of work through it and see how it worked, and, and the reviews were awesome. The, it was a blessing to so many people. And so we want it to be a blessing to our entire church. I encourage you, pick up a book, get the audio. It's on that website. Get the Kindle edition. Make, pick up a reading guide as you go forth from here so that you too can join us in this journey to see what you may discover about yourself and about God who because of Jesus looks at you and delights in you and say, says, that's my son. That's my girl. I'm so happy they're here. I can't wait to spend more time with them. So let's begin.